Okay, uh, good morning. It's a Saturday morning and I just wanted to actually go through uh, some um, durations on exactly what kind of software do you use to set up like a live stream for say you want to play on a radio station. Actually, I've been posting a lot of questions. This is my blog to GMN producers. I'm hoping that we can get more DJs and, and producers to participate with my cause in being able to produce music um, together. I mean, that's the, that's the big thing now that a lot of the uh, big DJs are doing. They're actually collaborating to produce tracks together. You know, sometimes it's a hit, sometimes it's a miss, but you, what you're gonna find in this industry, as you can see, people are already posting to me, um, is that having a studio you don't always have all the the uh the equipment that you need i mean i have quite a bit set up as you can see here but i don't have everything i don't have a complete you know orchestra or drums you know i have software that does it but a lot of times by collaborating with other djs and producers you can actually have different software and different uh tools that you would need to 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 enhance your tracks or your music. So that's what I was trying to do. So getting to what I was what I what I wanted to to talk about was say say for instance you want to play live on a station and just recently I was asked to play on the house station radio and there was two there was a couple of things I needed to do before I can do that. Okay. The first thing in order to do this is well one for one, I had a couple of programs in the background here. Let's just close these down. As you can see, I got a lot of things going on. I got my music maker, I got my Acid Pro, I got different programs on my, my screen. But the, the main thing that was needed was you need Winamp and you need this Isis Cast Win32. And what you want to do first is you really want to bring up like the Winamp first. And you want to make sure that, you, or you want to install this on your machine. And you can probably Google Winamp if you wanted to install it on the machine. It'll automatically come up. Um, once you have that up and running, um, I use what I do for my DJ. And everybody uses something different, but I actually use Tracker, my Tracker Pro S4. This is my Tracker. You want to make sure that you're streaming. Um, through your tr what, through whatever you're using for your tracker, you want to make sure that you're sh that your streaming preferences are streaming for the tracker. So you have to probably go into your preferences and check to make sure that your preferences is is streaming. As soon as that comes up, okay. So as you can see here, my preferences for my um, you want to make sure that you have your your, your, well, obviously, my I have a whole different bunch of sound cards, but make sure that it's going through your the output is going through the default route. Normally, it would be Tracker S4 for my audio for my, my drives, and also make sure that your your global settings is set up for your for, for broadcasting. That you have, they'll normally give you the parameters for this, whether it's stream, you need an address, you need the port for this, and you need the format, which is 128 kilobits for this. Okay, so this is something that the radio station supplies for you when you set this up. And normally they send you a procedure that gives you this information that you can set this up in, inside your preferences, whatever you're using. I'm using Tracker, you may be using something else to, in order to do that. Okay, so you have to have that set okay so let's just close this and once uh, you bring up your um, the Winamp should be up I think should be coming up once Winamp comes up you can actually actually we could do this I can actually show you something else that would be a lot easier because I already taped this this view so I'm going to show you something here this is a, this is, I use this program to produce my movies. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go through the duration, just like if I was doing a, the movie here, rather than having to go through the whole duration. I'm just going to play. I'm going to play this. 
Let's just make sure we play this just like I was playing a movie. Go back. And this is still uh, processing. There's a lot of things going on in this computer. Generally, you should really shut your computer down and not have anything running in the background, obviously. Um, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just uh, enable my sound card to play, and then I'm going to hit play. And as soon as it starts to play, we'll be able to see the movie, and I'll, I'll actually blow this up in a, a large screen so you can actually see this in a, in, in, a, in a bigger view once this comes up. This is Windows 8, by the way. I hate it. Um, I have another PC over here. I have a couple of PCs. I'm not too familiar. I have an Apple PC, but I don't use my Apple for processing um, programs. I use that PC just specifically for the road because I don't want to put anything on there. It's just when I go to DJ, I use that computer. This Windows 8 computer is like my processing computer because most of the uh, applications are compatible with some of the software that you're trying to use. Okay, so this is the program. So let's blow this up large so I can actually show you what I mean here. So let's hit play again. And this is what I was trying to show you. I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, it says here that the first thing you wanted to do this is how we had the program started. We did a, a Skype here. And actually what I'm going to do is, I can't really see that. that that's kind of, um, um, it's not really that clear. Um, what I'm going to do here, instead of playing it through here, is I'm going to play it through my, um, say, WinApp, WinApp, WinApp is up. That didn't look that clear. It, it looked more clear once I processed it in HD. But Okay, so WinApp is up. WinApp's going to come up. Okay. You're going to have to set up your WinApp. You're going to need all of this stuff, the server address, the port. The radio station will supply all this information to you. Okay, so don't worry about all of this. You'll be able to set this all up. You'll also be able to set up parameters for you within your node cast for WinApp. But every time you load WinApp, you'll have this. This is very important. Okay, whatever you do, just don't hit connect because... If you connect, you're going to connect to the radio station. You want to make sure that you just, when, when you get ready to play this, you have to make sure that your URL is set for the streaming, which is 127 stream for this. This has to be set for that. Okay. Also, you have to make sure that your um, ISIS is up. I tell you that that's another program that you need for this in order to stream to your station. You need this IceCast, I mean IceCast 2. You have to load this on your machine. Okay, so you, so you need so you need the Winamp and you need IceCast in order to load. The, so, so the question was, what program do you use to, to actually stream to a radio station? And the, the answer for me, for this particular, I mean, you're going to find most radio stations is pretty much the same way is they're using Winamp and they're using IceCast in order to stream. So once IceCast comes up, which it should be up in a minute, in the background, it should be coming up, you'll be able to see um, how you need to start that program. And at the same time, you also need to start your your once you get everything started, you need to get the radio button. You need to hit this radio button here. And this thing needs to go solid. If it doesn't go solid, then there's a problem. Okay, so this has to go solid. So you got to make sure that that's going solid. That's got to go solid, which is solid right now. Okay, for your, your tracker. Your ISIS has to be up. I don't know why it's not. It should be up. Should be in the background somewhere. Let's just bring this down. And where is my ISIS set? It's there somewhere. Yeah, it's coming up. It's just like this system I hated. So 
it's not slow, but it's just the processing for Windows 8 is a little bit different than um, if I was doing something else. So this is, let's just stop this for a second. This, the volume has to be turned all the way down on your Win app where you're going to get feedback. Oh, you're going to hear, you're going to hear that the station is going to sound like it's playing doubles. So you don't want, you don't want that. Okay, so once ISIS is up, this is Winamp. What? That's Winamp, I'm sorry. We need ISIS up. Maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't hit the button. All right, so we hit the button for ISIS. It should come up. Give it a minute, and you'll see that will come up. Once that comes up, there you go. All right, so ISIS is up. Right now, the server is stopped. You need to start the server. Okay, that's got to start. You got to have the radio button checked. You have to have the your file. The URL has to be 127 streaming. Volume has to be all the way down. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to load a track. Let's say you load a track in here. I have a track loaded. You hit play. Let's just turn this down a little bit. So that's playing, as you can see. Now, how you know that it's working is you'll have output. These things will be bouncing up and down. And by this being bouncing up and down, that means that you're ready to go for the radio station. It's all ready to go. That's running. That's running. Your null set's running. Your tracker's running. I, I, as you can see, tracker's running. The radio button, radio button is set. And I'm pretty much ready to go for my, for, for my DJing game. Now, the thing is, to, in order to go onto the radio station itself, you would hit connect. You do not want to hit connect while this is going until the radio station tells you to stop this until the radio station tells you to connect because if you hit connect you're going to automatically interrupt the radio station so this is a short version of what you have to do to set up the radio station and I was trying to tell a lot of guys and a lot of guys don't know how to do this this is like uh, you know whatever it's not only really not that hard you just got to kind of like just keep going at it um, I told people specifically that you know with getting back to the blog for one second you know, a couple of things I had posted in the blog, just to go over this real quick. This is my blog, by the way. And if you really want to just if you really want to be a part of this, just send me a request and I'll add you to this. And this is a really important this is more for producers, people that really want to be a be producers, people that really want to collaborate with me. I told everybody that, you know, if you look right now on Mixcloud, Mixcloud is all the DJs right now. If you look at the DJs, this is like, I just did this mix here. This is my latest mix, Deep House Clay. And you look at the, the, the bingo players, Feet, was, was collaborating with East uh, Movement. A lot of these DJs are collaborating with John Lager and, and Slatter Hogan, um, Ginga Feet, and, and Danny and Zerlio, okay? Heidi and Feet, T-Pain, Lil Wayne, how they're doing it is they collaborate. Why is collaboration important? Because collaboration is important because you as a DJ are always going to be limited to what you can do in the industry. By you being connected to other artists and other producers, it gives you much more of a wide variety, especially when you're trying to do a track. If you're trying to set up a track, Specifically, you know, I have a whole bunch of different things that I use. I use FL Studio. I use um, Acid. I use Reasons. I use Alberton Live. You know, a lot of people may not have Alberton Live. May, a lot of people may not have FL Studio. Um, some people may use a different program. So it kind of gives you a variety so that when you want to send your track over to somebody else, they can actually say, oh, I can, oh, okay, you sent me this track, great. I can actually go in and, and edit. If I needed to edit a track, um, I can take it, bring it into 
recycle or bring it into Alberton Live or bring it into Reasons or bring it into something else. And, and then I can actually, you know, remaster. If I wanted to remaster the track, I can actually master the track with being able to go into another program. Like, I like this Magic Music. This is the latest one, Magic Music Maker 2013, which is the latest. And this actually can master your... So Mastering Suite 4 would actually can actually master your track for anything that you need in any kind of compression, any type of studio, studio that you want. You and it has a six-band equalizer. You can put all this stuff in there. You can change your 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 sound to play whatever you want. And it actually will master it just like you view in a studio a studio. So there's a lot out here to use. And you know, I want to to, to illustrate that you collaboration is really important in doing this and with that said I'm going to I'm going to end this video I don't want to pick up a lot of your time or your space thank you so much for listening to me and if you have any questions you can always send you can always Facebook me and you know ask any questions you need and I'm there and vice versa so thank you and you guys have a great weekend this is DJ Greg G signing out thanks